Libertarianism from Latin, libertas, meaning freedom, is a collection of political philosophies and movements that uphold liberty as a core principle. Libertarians seek to maximize political freedom and autonomy, emphasizing freedom of choice, voluntary association, and individual judgment. Libertarians share a skepticism of authority and state power, but they diverge on the scope of their opposition to existing political and economic systems. Various schools of libertarian thought offer a range of views regarding the legitimate functions of state and private power, often calling for the restriction or dissolution of coercive social institutions. Traditionally, libertarianism was a term for a form of left wing politics. Such left libertarian ideologies seek to abolish capitalism and private ownership of the means of production, or else to restrict their purview or effects, in favor of common or cooperative ownership and management, viewing private property as a barrier to freedom and liberty. In the United States, modern right libertarian ideologies, such as minarchism and anarcho-capitalism, co-opted the term in the mid-20th century to instead advocate laissez-faire capitalism and strong private property rights, such as in land, infrastructure, and natural resources. Etymology <inaudible> <inaudible> The first recorded use of the term, libertarian was in 1789, when William Belsham wrote about libertarianism in the context of metaphysics. Libertarian came to mean an advocate or defender of liberty, especially in the political and social spheres, as early as 1796, when the London packet printed on 12 February, lately marched out of the prison at Bristol, 450 of the French libertarians. The word was again used in a political sense in 1802 in a short piece critiquing a poem by the author of Gabir, and has since been used with this meaning, the use of the word libertarian to describe a new set of political positions has been traced to the French cognate, libertaire, coined in a letter French libertarian communist Joseph Dejac wrote to mutualist Pierre Joseph Proudhon in 1857. Dejac also used the term for his anarchist publication Le Libertaire, Journal du Mouvement Social, which was printed from 9 June 1858 to 4 February 1861 in New York City. In the mid 1890s, Sebastian Faure began publishing a new Le Libertaire while France's Third Republic enacted the Lois Scolaritz, villainous laws, which banned anarchist publications in France. Libertarianism has frequently been used as a synonym for anarchism since this time, the term libertarianism was first used in the United States as a synonym for classical liberalism in May 1955 by writer Dean Russell, a colleague of Leonard Reed and a classical liberal himself. He justified the choice of the word as follows. Many of us call ourselves liberals, and it is true that the word liberal once described persons who respected the individual and feared the use of mass compulsions. But the leftists have now corrupted that once proud term to identify themselves and their program of more government ownership of property and more controls over persons. As a result, those of us who believe in freedom must explain that when we call ourselves liberals, we mean liberals in the uncorrupted classical sense. At best, this is awkward and subject to misunderstanding. Here is a suggestion, let those of us who love liberty trademark and reserve for our own use the good and honorable word libertarian. Subsequently, a growing number of Americans with classical liberal beliefs in the United States began to describe themselves as libertarian. One person responsible for popularizing the term libertarian in this sense was Murray Rothbard, who started publishing libertarian works in the 1960s. Rothbard describes this modern use of the words overtly as a capture from his enemies, saying that for the first time in my memory, we, our side, had captured a crucial word from the enemy. Libertarians had long been simply a polite word for left-wing anarchists, that is for anti-private property anarchists, either of the communist or syndicalist variety. But now we had taken it over. Libertarianism in the United States has been described as conservative on economic issues and liberal on personal freedom for common meanings of conservative and liberal in the United States and it is also often associated with a foreign policy of non-interventionism. Philosophy There is contention about whether left and right libertarianism 
"...represent distinct ideologies as opposed to variations on a theme." All libertarians begin with a conception of personal autonomy from which they argue in favor of civil liberties and a reduction or elimination of the state. Left libertarianism encompasses those libertarian beliefs that claim the Earth's natural resources belong to everyone in an egalitarian manner, either unowned or owned collectively. Contemporary left libertarians such as Hillel Steiner, Peter Valentine, Philippe Van Parijsch, Michael Otsuka and David Ellerman believe the appropriation of land must leave enough and is good for others or be taxed by society to compensate for the exclusionary effects of private property. Libertarian socialists social and individualist anarchists, libertarian Marxists, council communists, Luxembourgists and Delianists promote usufruct and socialist economic theories, including communism, collectivism, syndicalism and mutualism. They criticize the state for being the defender of private property and believe capitalism entails wage slavery. Right libertarianism developed in the United States in the mid-20th century and is the most popular conception of libertarianism in that region. It is commonly referred to as a continuation or radicalization of classical liberalism. Right libertarians, while often sharing left libertarians' advocacy for social freedom, also value the social institutions that enforce conditions of capitalism, while rejecting institutions that function in opposition to these on the grounds that such interventions represent unnecessary coercion of individuals and abrogation of their economic freedom. Anarcho-capitalists seek complete elimination of the state in favor of privately funded security services while minarchists defend night watchmen states which maintain only those functions of government necessary to maintain conditions of capitalism and personal security. Topic. Personal autonomy Anarchism envisages freedom as a form of autonomy, which Paul Goodman describes as the ability to initiate a task and do it one's own way, without orders from authorities who do not know the actual problem and the available means. All anarchists oppose political and legal authority, but collectivist strains also oppose the economic authority of private property. These social anarchists emphasize mutual aid, whereas individualist anarchists extol individual sovereignty. Some right libertarians consider the non aggression principle to be a core part of their beliefs. <laughs> Civil liberties Libertarians have been advocates and activists of civil liberties, including free love and free thought. Advocates of free love viewed sexual freedom as a clear, direct expression of individual sovereignty and they particularly stressed women's rights as most sexual laws discriminated against women, for example, marriage laws and anti birth control measures. Free love appeared alongside anarcho feminism and advocacy of LGBT rights. Anarcha-feminism developed as a synthesis of radical feminism and anarchism and views patriarchy as a fundamental manifestation of compulsory government. It was inspired by the late 19th century writings of early feminist anarchists such as Lucy Parsons, Emma Goldman, Voltairine de Clare and Virginia Bolton. Anarcha feminists, like other radical feminists, criticize and advocate the abolition of traditional conceptions of family, education and gender roles. Free Society 1895 as the firebrand, 1897-1904 as Free Society was an anarchist newspaper in the United States that staunchly advocated free love and women's rights, while criticizing comstockery, the censorship of sexual information. In recent times, anarchism has also voiced opinions and taken action around certain sex related subjects such as pornography, BDSM, and the sex industry. Free thought is a philosophical viewpoint that holds opinions should be formed on the basis of science, logic, and reason in contrast with authority, tradition, or other dogmas. In the United States, free thought was an anti Christian, anti clerical movement whose purpose was to make the individual politically and spiritually free to decide on religious matters. A number of contributors to liberty were prominent figures in both free thought and anarchism. In 1901, Catalan anarchist and free thinker Francis Ferrer i Guardia established modern or progressive schools in Barcelona in defiance of an educational system controlled by the Catholic Church. Fiercely anti clerical, Ferrer believed in freedom in education, i.e., education free from the authority of the church and state. The school's stated goal was to 
educate the working class in a rational, secular and non-coercive setting." Later in the 20th century, Austrian Freudu Marxist Wilhelm Reich became a consistent propagandist for sexual freedom, going as far as opening free sex counseling clinics in Vienna for working class patients, as well as coining the phrase, sexual revolution, in one of his books from the 1940s. During the early 1970s, the English anarchist and pacifist Alex Comfort achieved international celebrity for writing the sex manuals The Joy of Sex and More Joy of Sex. Topic. State Many left libertarians are anarchists and believe the state inherently violates personal autonomy. As Robert Paul Wolfe has argued, since the state is authority, the right to rule, anarchism which rejects the state is the only political doctrine consistent with autonomy in which the individual alone is the judge of his moral constraints. Social anarchists believe the state defends private property, which they view as intrinsically harmful, while market-oriented left libertarians argue that so-called free markets actually consist of economic privileges granted by the state. These latter libertarians advocate instead for freed markets, which are freed from these privileges. There is a debate amongst right libertarians as to whether or not the state is legitimate, while anarcho capitalists advocate its abolition. Minarchists support minimal states, often referred to as night watchman states. Libertarians take a skeptical view of government authority. Minarchists maintain that the state is necessary for the protection of individuals from aggression, theft, breach of contract and fraud. They believe the only legitimate governmental institutions are the military, police and courts, though some expand this list to include fire departments, prisons and the executive and legislative branches. They justify the state on the grounds that it is the logical consequence of adhering to the non-aggression principle and argue that anarchism is immoral because it implies that the non-aggression principle is optional, that the enforcement of laws under anarchism is open to competition. Another common justification is that private defense agencies and court firms would tend to represent the interests of those who pay them enough. Anarcho capitalists argue that the state violates the non aggression principle by its nature because governments use force against those who have not stolen or vandalized private property, assaulted anyone, or committed fraud. Linda and Morris Tanhill argue that no coercive monopoly of force can arise on a truly free market and that a government's citizenry can not desert them in favor of a competent protection and defense agency. Topic property rights Left libertarians believe that neither claiming nor mixing one's labor with natural resources is enough to generate full private property rights and maintain that natural resources ought to be held in an egalitarian manner, either unowned or owned collectively. Right libertarians maintain that unowned natural resources may be appropriated by the first person who discovers them, mixes his labor with them, or merely claims them, without the consent of others, and with little or no payment to them. They believe that natural resources are originally unowned and therefore private parties may appropriate them at will without the consent of, or owing to, others. Topic economics Left libertarians social and individualist anarchists, libertarian Marxists and left-wing market anarchists argue in favor of socialist theories such as communism, syndicalism and mutualism anarchist economics. Daniel Guerin writes that anarchism is really a synonym for socialism. The anarchist is primarily a socialist whose aim is to abolish the exploitation of man by man. Anarchism is only one of the streams of socialist thought, that stream whose main components are concern for liberty and haste to abolish the state. Right libertarians are economic liberals of either the Austrian school or Chicago school and support laissez faire capitalism. Topic wage labor Wage labor has long been compared by socialists and anarcho syndicalists to slavery. As a result, the term wage slavery is often utilized as a pejorative for wage labor. Advocates of slavery looked upon the comparative evils of slave society and of free society, of slavery to human masters and slavery to capital and proceeded to argue that wage slavery was actually worse than chattel slavery. Slavery apologists like George Fitzhugh contended that workers only accepted wage labor with the passage of time, as they became familiarized and inattentive to the infected social atmosphere they continually inhale. D. According to Noam Chomsky, analysis of the psychological implications of wage slavery goes back to the Enlightenment era. 
In his 1791 book On the Limits of State Action, classical liberal thinker Wilhelm von Humboldt explained how whatever does not spring from a man's free choice, or is only the result of instruction and guidance, does not enter into his very nature, he does not perform it with truly human energies, but merely with mechanical exactness and so when the laborer works under external control we may admire what he does, but we despise what he is. For Marxists, labor as commodity, which is how they regard wage labor, provides an absolutely fundamental point of attack against capitalism. It can be persuasively argued, noted philosopher John Nelson, that the conception of the worker's labor as a commodity confirms Marx's stigmatization of the wage system of private capitalism as wage slavery, that is, as an instrument of the capitalists for reducing the worker's condition to that of a slave, if not below it. That this objection is fundamental follows immediately from Marx's conclusion that wage labor is the very foundation of capitalism. Without a class dependent on wages, the moment individuals confront each other as free persons, there can be no production of surplus value, without the production of surplus value there can be no capitalist production, and hence no capital and no capitalist. Topic. Prominent currents. Topic. Left libertarianism Left libertarianism, or left -wing libertarianism names several related, but distinct approaches to political and social theory which stresses both individual freedom and social equality. In its classical usage, left libertarianism is a synonym for anti-authoritarian varieties of left-wing politics, i.e. libertarian socialism, which includes anarchism and libertarian Marxism, among others. Left libertarianism can also refer to political positions associated with academic philosophers Hillel Steiner, Philippe van Parijs and Peter Valentine that combine self-ownership with an egalitarian approach to natural resources, while maintaining full respect for personal property. Left libertarians are skeptical of or fully against private property, arguing that neither claiming nor mixing one's labor with natural resources is enough to generate full private property rights and maintain that natural resources land, oil, gold and vegetables vegetation should be held in an egalitarian manner, either unowned or owned collectively. Those left libertarians who support private property do so under the condition that recompense is offered to the local community. Many left libertarian schools of thought are communist, advocating the eventual replacement of money with labor vouchers or decentralized planning. On the other hand, left-wing market anarchism, which includes Pierre-Joseph Proudhon's mutualism and Samuel Edward Konkin III's agorism, appeals to left-wing concerns such as egalitarianism, gender and sexuality, class, immigration and environmentalism within the paradigm of a socialist free market. Right libertarianism Right libertarianism, or right -wing libertarianism refers to libertarian political philosophies that advocate negative rights, natural law and a major reversal of the modern welfare state. Right libertarians strongly support private property rights and defend market distribution of natural resources and private property. This position is contrasted with that of some versions of left libertarianism, which maintain that natural resources belong to everyone in an egalitarian manner, either unowned or owned collectively. Right libertarianism includes anarcho-capitalism and laissez-faire, minarchist liberalism. Topic: History. Topic: Age of Enlightenment. Elements of libertarianism can be traced as far back as the ancient Chinese philosopher Lao Tzu and the higher law concepts of the Greeks and the Israelites. In 17th century England, libertarian ideas began to take modern form in the writings of the Levellers and John Locke. In the middle of that century, opponents of royal power began to be called Whigs, or sometimes simply, opposition, or country, as opposed to court writers. During the 18th century, classical liberal ideas flourished in Europe and North America. Libertarians of various schools were influenced by classical liberal ideas. For libertarian philosopher Roderick T. Long, both libertarian socialists and libertarian capitalists share a common, or at least an overlapping intellectual ancestry. 
Both claim the 17th century English levelers and the 18th century French encyclopedists among their ideological forebears, and also usually share an admiration for Thomas Jefferson and Thomas Paine. John Locke greatly influenced both libertarianism and the modern world in his writings published before and after the English Revolution of 1688, especially A Letter Concerning Toleration 1667, Two Treatises of Government 1689, and An Essay Concerning Human Understanding 1690. In the text of 1689, he established the basis of liberal political theory, that people's rights existed before government, that the purpose of government is to protect personal and property rights, that people may dissolve governments that do not do so, and that representative government is the best form to protect rights. The United States Declaration of Independence was inspired by Locke in its statement. To secure these rights, governments are instituted among men, deriving their just powers from the consent of the governed. That whenever any form of government becomes destructive of these ends, it is the right of the people to alter or to abolish it. Nevertheless, scholar Ellen Mason's Wood says that there are doctrines of individualism that are opposed to Lockean individualism, and non-Lockean individualism may encompass socialism. According to Murray Rothbard, the libertarian creed emerged from the classical liberal challenges to an absolute central state and a king ruling by divine right on top of an older, restrictive web of feudal land monopolies and urban guild controls and restrictions." The mercantilism of a bureaucratic warfaring state allied with privileged merchants. The object of classical liberals was individual liberty in the economy, in personal freedoms and civil liberty, separation of state and religion, and peace as an alternative to imperial aggrandizement. He cites Locke's contemporaries, the Levellers, who held similar views. Also influential were the English, Cato's Letters, during the early 1700s, reprinted eagerly by American colonists who already were free of European aristocracy and feudal land monopolies. In January of 1776, only two years after coming to America from England, Thomas Paine published his pamphlet Common Sense calling for independence for the colonies. Paine promoted classical liberal ideas in clear, concise language that allowed the general public to understand the debates among the political elites. Common sense was immensely popular in disseminating these ideas, selling hundreds of thousands of copies. Paine later would write The Rights of Man and the Age of Reason and participate in the French Revolution. Paine's theory of property showed a libertarian concern. With the redistribution of resources, in 1793, William Godwin wrote a libertarian philosophical treatise, Enquiry Concerning Political Justice and Its Influence on Morals and Happiness, which criticized ideas of human rights and of society by contract based on vague promises. He took classical liberalism to its logical anarchic conclusion by rejecting all political institutions, law, government and apparatus of coercion as well as all political protest and insurrection. Instead of institutionalized justice, Godwin proposed that people influence one another to moral goodness through informal reasoned persuasion, including in the associations they joined as this would facilitate happiness. <laughs> Rise of anarchism Modern anarchism sprang from the secular or religious thought of the Enlightenment, particularly Jean-Jacques Rousseau's arguments for the moral centrality of freedom. As part of the political turmoil of the 1790s in the wake of the French Revolution, William Godwin developed the first expression of modern anarchist thought. According to Peter Kropotkin, Godwin was the first to formulate the political and economical conceptions of anarchism, even though he did not give that name to the ideas developed in his work. While Godwin attached his anarchist ideas to an early Edmund Burke, Godwin is generally regarded as the founder of the school of thought known as philosophical anarchism. He argued in Political Justice 1793 that government has an inherently malevolent influence on society and that it perpetuates dependency and ignorance. He thought that the spread of the use of reason to the masses would eventually cause government to wither away as an unnecessary force. Although he did not accord the state with moral legitimacy, he was against the use of revolutionary tactics for removing the government from power. Rather, Godwin advocated for its replacement through a process of peaceful evolution. His aversion to the imposition of a rules based society led him to denounce, as a manifestation of the people's mental enslavement, 
the foundations of law, property rights and even the institution of marriage. Godwin considered the basic foundations of society as constraining the natural development of individuals to use their powers of reasoning to arrive at a mutually beneficial method of social organization. In each case, government and its institutions are shown to constrain the development of our capacity to live wholly in accordance with the full and free exercise of private judgment. In France, various anarchist currents were present during the revolutionary period, with some revolutionaries using the term anarchist in a positive light as early as September 1793. The enrages opposed revolutionary government as a contradiction in terms. Denouncing the Jacobin dictatorship, Jean Varlet wrote in 1794 that Government and revolution are incompatible, unless the people wishes to set its constituted authorities in permanent insurrection against itself. In his Manifesto of the Equals, Sylvain Maréchal looked forward to the disappearance, once and for all, of the revolting distinction between rich and poor, of great and small, of masters and valets, of governors and governed. Libertarian socialism Libertarian socialism, libertarian communism and libertarian Marxism are all phrases which activists with a variety of perspectives have applied to their views. Anarchist communist philosopher Joseph Dejac was the first person to describe himself as a libertarian. Unlike mutualist anarchist philosopher Pierre Joseph Proudhon, he argued that it is not the product of his or her labor that the worker has a right to, but to the satisfaction of his or her needs, whatever may be their nature." According to anarchist historian Max Netlau, the first use of the term, "'Libertarian Communism' was in November 1880, when a French anarchist congress employed it to more clearly identify its doctrines. The French anarchist journalist Sébastien Faure started the weekly paper Le Libertaire the Libertarian in 1895. Individualist anarchism refers to several traditions of thought within the anarchist movement that emphasize the individual and their will over any kinds of external determinants such as groups, society, traditions, and ideological systems. An influential form of individualist anarchism called egoism or egoist anarchism was expounded by one of the earliest and best known proponents of individualist anarchism, the German Max Stirner. Stirner's The Ego and Its Own, published in 1844, is a founding text of the philosophy. According to Stirner, the only limitation on the rights of the individual is their power to obtain what they desire, without regard for God, state, or morality. Stirner advocated self assertion and foresaw unions of egoists, non systematic associations continually renewed by all parties' support through an act of will, which Stirner proposed as a form of organization in place of the state. Egoist anarchists argue that egoism will foster genuine and spontaneous union between individuals. Egoism has inspired many interpretations of Stirner's philosophy. It was rediscovered and promoted by German philosophical anarchist and LGBT activist John Henry Mackay. Josiah Warren is widely regarded as the first American anarchist, and the four-page weekly paper he edited during 1833, The Peaceful Revolutionist, was the first anarchist periodical published. For American anarchist historian Eunice Manette Schuster, I.T. as a parent that Proudhonian anarchism was to be found in the United States at least as early as 1848 and that it was not conscious of its affinity to the individualist anarchism of Josiah Warren and Stephen Pearl Andrews. William B. Green presented this Proudhonian mutualism in its purest and most systematic form. Later, Benjamin Tucker fused Stirner's egoism with the economics of Warren and Proudhon in his eclectic influential publication Liberty. From these early influences, individualist anarchism in different countries attracted a small yet diverse following of bohemian artists and intellectuals, free love and birth control advocates, anarchism and issues related to love and sex, individualist naturists, nudists, anarcho-naturism, free thought and anti-clerical activists, as well as young anarchist outlaws in what became known as illegalism and individual reclamation, European individualist anarchism and individualist anarchism in France. These authors and activists included Emile Armand, Han Reiner, Henri Zisli, Renzo Novator, Miguel Jiménez Igualada, Adolf Brand and Lev Chernyi. In 1873, the follower and translator of Proudhon, the Catalan Francis Pi I Margall, became president of Spain with a program which wanted to establish a decentralized, or 
Cantonalist political system on Proudhonian lines, who according to Rudolf Rocker had political ideas less than pre greater than slash pre greater than dot 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 much in common with those of Richard Price, Joseph Priestley, Sick, Thomas Paine, Jefferson, and other representatives of the Anglo-American liberalism of the first period. He wanted to limit the power of the state to a minimum and gradually replace it by a socialist economic order. On the other hand, Fermin Salvochia was a mayor of the city of Cadiz and a president of the province of Cadiz. He was one of the main propagators of anarchist thought in that area in the late 19th century and is considered to be, perhaps the most beloved figure in the Spanish anarchist movement of the 19th century. Ideologically, he was influenced by Bradlaugh, Owen and Paine, whose works he had studied during his stay in England and Kropotkin, whom he read later. The revolutionary wave of 1917–1923 saw the active participation of anarchists in Russia and Europe. Russian anarchists participated alongside the Bolsheviks in both the February and October 1917 revolutions. However, Bolsheviks in central Russia quickly began to imprison or drive underground the libertarian anarchists. Many fled to the Ukraine. There, in the Ukrainian Free Territory they fought in the Russian Civil War against the White Movement, monarchists and other opponents of revolution and then against Bolsheviks as part of the Revolutionary Insurrectionary Army of Ukraine led by Nestor Makhno, who established an anarchist society in the region for a number of months. Expelled American anarchists Emma Goldman and Alexander Berkman protested Bolshevik policy before they left Russia. The victory of the Bolsheviks damaged anarchist movements internationally as workers and activists joined communist parties. In France and the United States, for example, members of the major syndicalist movements of the CGT and IWW joined the Communist International. In Paris, the Dielo Truda group of Russian anarchist exiles, which included Nestor Makhno, issued a 1926 manifesto, the organizational platform of the General Union of Anarchists draft, calling for new anarchist organizing structures. The Bavarian Soviet Republic of 1918-1919 had libertarian socialist characteristics. In Italy, from 1918 to 1921 the anarcho-syndicalist trade union Union Syndicale Italiana grew to 800,000 members. In the 1920s and 1930s, with the rise of fascism in Europe, anarchists began to fight fascists in Italy, in France during the February 1934 riots and in Spain where the CNT Confederación Nacional del Trabajo boycott of elections led to a right-wing victory and its later participation in voting in 1936 helped bring the Popular Front back to power. Power. This led to a ruling class attempted coup and the Spanish Civil War 1936 Grupo Comunista Anarchico de Firenze held that the during early 20th century, the terms libertarian communism and anarchist communism became synonymous within the international anarchist movement as a result of the close connection they had in Spain anarchism in Spain with libertarian communism becoming the prevalent term. Murray Bookchin wrote that the Spanish libertarian movement of the mid-1930s was unique because its workers' control and collectives—which came out of a three-generation, massive libertarian movement divided the Republican camp and challenged the Marxists, urban anarchists, created libertarian communist forms of organization which evolved into the CNT, a syndicalist union providing the infrastructure for a libertarian society. Also formed were local bodies to administer social and economic life on a decentralized libertarian basis. Much of the infrastructure was destroyed during the 1930s Spanish Civil War against authoritarian and fascist forces. The Iberian Federation of Libertarian Youth (FIJL), Spanish Federación Ibérica de Juventudes Libertarias, sometimes abbreviated as Libertarian Youth Juventudes Libertarias, was a libertarian socialist organization created in 1932 in Madrid. In February 1937, the FIJL organized a plenum of regional organizations, Second Congress of FIJL. In October 1938, from the 16th through the 30th in Barcelona the FIJL participated in a national plenum of the libertarian movement, also attended by members of the CNT and the Iberian Anarchist Federation The FIJL exists until today. When the Republican forces lost the Spanish Civil War, the city of Madrid was turned over to the Francoist forces in 1939 by the last non-Francoist mayor of the city, the anarchist Melcher Rodriguez Garcia. During autumn of 1931, the 
Manifesto of the Thirty was published by militants of the anarchist trade union CNT and among those who signed it there was the CNT General Secretary 1922-1923 Joan Perro, Angel Pestaña CNT General Secretary in 1929 and Juan López Sánchez. They were called Trentismo and they were calling for libertarian possibilism which advocated achieving libertarian socialist ends with participation inside structures of contemporary parliamentary democracy. In 1932, they established the Syndicalist Party which participates in the 1936 Spanish general elections and proceed to be a part of the leftist coalition of parties known as the Popular Front obtaining two congressmen Pestaña and Benito Pabon. In 1938, Horacio Prieto, general secretary of the CNT, proposes that the Iberian Anarchist Federation transforms itself into a libertarian socialist party and that it participates in the national elections. The Manifesto of Libertarian Communism was written in 1953 by Georges Fontenis for the Federation Communist Libertaire of France. It is one of the key texts of the anarchist communist current known as platformism. In 1968, in Carrara, Italy the International of Anarchist Federations was founded during an international anarchist conference to advance libertarian solidarity. It wanted to form a strong and organized workers' movement, agreeing with the libertarian ideas. In the United States, the Libertarian League was founded in New York City in 1954 as a left libertarian political organization building on the Libertarian Book Club. Members included Sam Dolgoff, Russell Blackwell, Dave Van Ronk, Enrico Arrigoni and Murray Bookchin. In Australia, the Sydney Push was a predominantly left-wing intellectual subculture in Sydney from the late 1940s to the early 1970s which became associated with the label Sydney Libertarianism. Well-known associates of the Push include Jim Baker, John Flaws, Harry Hooten, Margaret Fink, Sasha Soldato, Lex Banning, Eva Cox, Richard Appleton, Patty McGuinness, David Mackinson, Germaine Greer, Clive James, Robert Hughes, Frank Morehouse and Lillian Roxon. Amongst the key intellectual figures in Push debates were philosophers David J. Iveson, George Molnar, Roloff Smiled, Darcy Waters and Jim Baker, as recorded in Baker's memoir Sydney Libertarians and the Push, published in the Libertarian Broadsheet in 1975. An understanding of libertarian values and social theory can be obtained from their publications, a few of which are available online. In 1969, French platformist anarcho communist Daniel Guérin published an essay in 1969 called Libertarian Marxism, in which he dealt with the debate between Karl Marx and Mikhail Bakunin at the First International and afterwards suggested that L. libertarian Marxism rejects determinism and fatalism, giving the greater place to individual will, intuition, imagination, reflex complex speeds, and to the deep instincts of the masses, which are more far-seeing in hours of crisis than the reasonings of the elites. Libertarian Marxism thinks of the effects of surprise, provocation and boldness, refuses to be cluttered and paralyzed by a heavy scientific apparatus, doesn't equivocate or bluff, and guards itself from adventurism as much as from fear of the unknown. Libertarian Marxist currents often draw from Marx and Engels' later works, specifically the Grundrisse and the Civil War in France. They emphasize the Marxist belief in the ability of the working class to forge its own destiny without the need for a revolutionary party or state. Libertarian Marxism includes such currents as council communism, left communism, socialisme au barbarie, lettrism, situationism, and operaismo, autonomism, and new left. In the United States, from 1970 to 1981, there existed the publication Root and Branch, which had as a subtitle a libertarian Marxist journal. In 1974, the Libertarian Communism Journal was started in the United Kingdom by a group inside the Socialist Party of Great Britain. In 1986, the anarcho-syndicalist Sam Dolgoff started and led the publication Libertarian Labour Review in the United States which decided to rename itself as Anarcho-Syndicalist Review in order to avoid confusion with right libertarian views. Topic individualism in the United States The indigenous anarchist tradition in the United States was largely individualist. In 1825, Josiah Warren became aware of the social system of utopian socialist Robert Owen and began to talk with others in Cincinnati about founding a communist colony. When this group failed to come to an agreement about the form and goals of their proposed community, Warren sold his factory after only two years of operation, packed up his young family, and took his place as one of 900 or so Owenites who had decided to become part of the founding population of New Harmony, Indiana. 
Warren termed the phrase cost the limit of price and proposed a system to pay people with certificates indicating how many hours of work they did. They could exchange the notes at local time stores for goods that took the same amount of time to produce. He put his theories to the test by establishing an experimental labor for labor store called the Cincinnati Time Store where trade was facilitated by labor notes. The store proved successful and operated for three years, after which it was closed so that Warren could pursue establishing colonies based on mutualism, including utopia and modern times. After New Harmony failed, Warren shifted his ideological loyalties from socialism to anarchism which was no great leap, given that Owen's socialism had been predicated on Godwin's anarchism. Warren is widely regarded as the first American anarchist and the four-page weekly paper The Peaceful Revolutionist he edited during 1833 was the first anarchist periodical published, an enterprise for which he built his own printing press, cast his own type and made his own printing plates. Catalan historian Xavier Diaz reports that the intentional communal experiments pioneered by Warren were influential in European individualist anarchists of the late 19th and early 20th centuries such as Émile Armand and the intentional communities started by them. Warren said that Stephen Pearl Andrews, individualist anarchist and close associate, wrote the most lucid and complete exposition of Warren's own theories in The Science of Society, published in 1852. Andrews was formerly associated with the Forerist movement, but converted to radical individualism after becoming acquainted with the work of Warren. Like Warren, he held the principle of «individual sovereignty» as being of paramount importance. Contemporary American anarchist Hakeem Bey reports, Stephen Pearl Andrews, was not a Forerist, but he lived through the brief craze for phalansteries in America and adopted a lot of Forerist principles and practices, a maker of worlds out of words. He syncretized abolitionism in the United States, free love, spiritual universalism, Warren, and Fourier into a grand utopian scheme he called the Universal Pantarchy. He was instrumental in founding several «intentional communities», including the «Brownstone Utopia» on 14th Street in New York, and «Modern Times» in Brentwood, Long Island. The latter became as famous as the best-known forest communes Brook Farm in Massachusetts and the North American Phalanx in New Jersey. In fact, modern times became downright notorious for free love and finally foundered under a wave of scandalous publicity. Andrews and Victoria Woodhull were members of the infamous Section 12 of the First International, expelled by Marx for its anarchist, feminist, and spiritualist tendencies. For American anarchist historian Eunice Manette Schuster. It is apparent that Proudhonian anarchism was to be found in the United States at least as early as 1848 and that it was not conscious of its affinity to the individualist anarchism of Josiah Warren and Stephen Pearl Andrews. William B. Green presented this Proudhonian mutualism in its purest and most systematic form. William Batchelder Green was a 19th-century mutualist individualist anarchist, Unitarian minister, soldier and promoter of free banking in the United States. Green is best known for the works Mutual Banking, which proposed an interest-free banking system, and Transcendentalism, a critique of the New England philosophical school. After 1850, he became active in labor reform. He was elected vice president of the New England Labor Reform League, the majority of the members holding to Proudhon's scheme of mutual banking, and in 1869 president of the Massachusetts Labor Union. Green then published Socialistic, Mutualistic, and Financial Fragments. 1875. He saw mutualism as the synthesis of liberty and order. His associationism is checked by individualism. Mind your own business, judge not that ye be not judged, over matters which are purely personal, as for example, moral conduct, the individual is sovereign, as well as over that which he himself produces. For this reason he demands mutuality in marriage—the equal right of a woman to her own personal freedom and property." Poet, naturalist and transcendentalist Henry David Thoreau was an important early influence in individualist anarchist thought in the United States and Europe. He is best known for his book Walden, a reflection upon simple living in natural surroundings, and his essay Civil Disobedience Resistance to Civil Government, an argument for individual resistance to civil government in moral opposition to an unjust state. 
In Walden, Thoreau advocates simple living and self-sufficiency among natural surroundings in resistance to the advancement of industrial civilization. Civil Disobedience, first published in 1849, argues that people should not permit governments to overrule or atrophy their consciences and that people have a duty to avoid allowing such acquiescence to enable the government to make them the agents of injustice. These works influenced green anarchism, anarcho-primitivism and anarcho-pacifism, as well as figures including Mohandas Gandhi, Martin Luther King Jr., Martin Buber and Leo Tolstoy. Many have seen in Thoreau one of the precursors of ecologism and anarcho-primitivism represented today in John Zerzan. For George Woodcock this attitude can be also motivated by certain idea of resistance to progress and of rejection of the growing materialism which is the nature of American society in the mid-19th century. Zerzan included Thoreau's excursions in his edited compilation of anti-civilization writings, against civilization, readings and reflections. Individualist anarchists such as Thoreau do not speak of economics, but simply the right of disunion from the state and foresee the gradual elimination of the state through social evolution. Agorist author J. Neil Shulman cites Thoreau as a primary inspiration. Many economists since Adam Smith have argued that unlike other taxes a land value tax would not cause economic inefficiency. It would be a progressive tax primarily paid by the wealthy and increase wages, reduce economic inequality, remove incentives to misuse real estate and reduce the vulnerability that economies face from credit and property bubbles. Early proponents of this view include Thomas Paine, Herbert Spencer, and Hugo Grotius, but the concept was widely popularized by the economist and social reformer Henry George. George believed that people ought to own the fruits of their labor and the value of the improvements they make, thus he was opposed to income taxes, sales taxes, taxes on improvements and all other taxes on production, labor, trade or commerce. George was among the staunchest defenders of free markets and his book Protection or Free Trade was read into the U.S. congressional record. Yet he did support direct management of natural monopolies as a last resort, such as right-of-way monopolies necessary for railroads. George advocated for elimination of intellectual property arrangements in favor of government sponsored prizes for inventors. Early followers of George's philosophy called themselves single taxers because they believed that the only legitimate, broad based tax was land rent. The term Georgism was coined later, though some modern proponents prefer the term geoism instead, leaving the meaning of geo earth in Greek deliberately ambiguous. The terms earth sharing, geonomics, and Geolibertarianism are used by some Georgists to represent a difference of emphasis, or real differences about how land rent should be spent, but all agree that land rent should be recovered from its private owners. Individualist anarchism found in the United States an important space for discussion and development within the group known as the Boston Anarchists. Even among the 19th century American individualists there was no monolithic doctrine and they disagreed amongst each other on various issues including intellectual property rights and possession versus property in land. Some Boston anarchists, including Benjamin Tucker, identified as socialists, which in the 19th century was often used in the sense of a commitment to improving conditions of the working class i.e., the labor problem. Lysander Spooner, besides his individualist anarchist activism, was also an anti-slavery activist and member of the First International. Tucker argued that the elimination of what he called the four monopolies, the land monopoly, the money and banking monopoly, the monopoly powers conferred by patents and the quasi-monopolistic effects of tariffs, would undermine the power of the wealthy and big business, making possible widespread property ownership and higher incomes for ordinary people, while minimizing the power of would-be bosses and achieving socialist goals without state action. Tucker's anarchist periodical, Liberty, was published from August 1881 to April 1908. The publication, emblazoned with Proudhon's quote that liberty is, not the daughter but the mother of order was instrumental in developing and formalizing the individualist anarchist philosophy through publishing essays and serving as a forum for debate. Contributors included Benjamin Tucker, Lysander Spooner, Auburn Herbert, Dyer Lum, Joshua K. Ingalls, John Henry McKay, Victor Yarrows, Wordsworth Donisthorpe, James L. Walker, J. William Lloyd, Florence Finch Kelly, Voltairine de Clare, Stephen T. Byington, John Beverly Robinson, Joe Labadee, Lillian Harmon and Henry Appleton. 
Later, Tucker and others abandoned their traditional support of natural rights and converted to an egoism modeled upon the philosophy of Max Stirner. A number of natural rights proponents stopped contributing in protest and t hereafter, liberty championed egoism, although its general content did not change significantly. Several publications were undoubtedly influenced by Liberty's presentation of egoism. They included, I published by C. L. Swartz, edited by W. E. Gordak and J. W. Lloyd, all associates of Liberty, The Ego and the Egoist, both of which were edited by Edward H. Fulton. Among the egoist papers that Tucker followed were the German Der Eigene, edited by Adolf Brand, and The Eagle and the Serpent, issued from London. The latter, the most prominent English-language egoist journal, was published from 1898 to 1900 with the subtitle A Journal of Egoistic Philosophy and Sociology. <laughs> Modern American libertarianism By around the start of the 20th century, the heyday of individualist anarchism had passed. H. L. Mencken and Albert J. Nock were the first prominent figures in the United States to describe themselves as libertarians. They believed Franklin D. Roosevelt had co opted the word liberal for his New Deal policies, which they opposed and used libertarian to signify their allegiance to individualism. In 1914, Nock joined the staff of The Nation magazine, which at the time was supportive of liberal capitalism. A lifelong admirer of Henry George, Nock went on to become co-editor of The Freeman from 1920 to 1924, a publication initially conceived as a vehicle for the single tax movement, financed by the wealthy wife of the magazine's other editor, Francis Nielsen. Critic H. L. Mencken wrote that, H is editorials during the three brief years of The Freeman set a mark that no other man of his trade has ever quite managed to reach. They were well informed and sometimes even learned, but there was never the slightest trace of pedantry in them." Executive Vice President of the Cato Institute, David Boas, writes, "...in 1943, at one of the lowest points for liberty and humanity in history, three remarkable women published books that could be said to have given birth to the modern libertarian movement." Isabel Paterson's The God of the Machine, Rose Wilder Lane's The Discovery of Freedom and Ayn Rand's The Fountainhead each promoted individualism and capitalism. None of the three used the term libertarianism to describe their beliefs and Rand specifically rejected the label, criticizing the burgeoning American libertarian movement as the hippies of the right. Rand's own philosophy, objectivism, is notedly similar to libertarianism and she accused libertarians of plagiarizing her ideas. Rand stated, all kinds of people today call themselves libertarians, especially something calling itself the new right, which consists of hippies who are anarchists instead of leftist collectivists, but anarchists are collectivists. Capitalism is the one system that requires absolute objective law, yet libertarians combine capitalism and anarchism. That's worse than anything the new left has proposed. It's a mockery of philosophy and ideology. They sling slogans and try to ride on two bandwagons. They want to be hippies, but don't want to preach collectivism because those jobs are already taken. But anarchism is a logical outgrowth of the anti-intellectual side of collectivism. I could deal with a Marxist with a greater chance of reaching some kind of understanding, and with much greater respect. Anarchists are the scum of the intellectual world of the left, which has given them up. So the right picks up another leftist discard. That's the libertarian movement. In 1946, Leonard E. Reed founded the Foundation for Economic Education FEE, an American nonprofit educational organization which promotes the principles of laissez-faire economics, private property, and limited government. According to Gary North, former FEE director of seminars and a current Ludwig von Mises Institute scholar, FEE is the granddaddy of all libertarian organizations. The initial officers of FEE were Leonard E. Reed as president, Austrian school economist Henry Hazlitt as vice president and chairman David Goodrich of B.F. Goodrich. Other trustees on the fee board have included wealthy industrialist Jasper Crane of DuPont, H.W. Lunau of William Volker & Co., and Robert Welch, founder of the John Birch Society. Austrian school economist Murray Rothbard was initially an enthusiastic partisan of the Old Right, particularly because of its general opposition to war and imperialism, but long embraced a reading of American history that emphasized the role of elite privilege in shaping legal and political institutions. 
He was part of Ayn Rand's circle for a brief period, but later harshly criticized objectivism. He praised Rand's Atlas Shrugged and wrote that she introduced me to the whole field of natural rights and natural law philosophy, prompting him to learn the glorious natural rights tradition. He soon broke with Rand over various differences, including his defense of anarchism. Rothbard was influenced by the work of the 19th-century American individualist anarchists and sought to meld their advocacy of free markets and private defense with the principles of Austrian economics. This new philosophy he called anarcho-capitalism. Carl Hess, a speechwriter for Barry Goldwater and primary author of the Republican Party's 1960 and 1964 platforms, became disillusioned with traditional politics following the 1964 presidential campaign in which Goldwater lost to Lyndon B. Johnson. He parted with the Republicans altogether after being rejected for employment with the party, and began work as a heavy-duty welder. Hess began reading American anarchists largely due to the recommendations of his friend Murray Rothbard and said that upon reading the works of communist anarchist Emma Goldman, he discovered that anarchists believed everything he had hoped the Republican Party would represent. For Hess, Goldman was the source for the best and most essential theories of Ayn Rand without any of the crazy solipsism that Rand was so fond of. Hess and Rothbard founded the journal Left and Right, a journal of libertarian thought, which was published from 1965 to 1968, with George Resch and Leonard P. Ligio. In 1969, they edited the Libertarian Forum 1969, which Hess left in 1971. Hess eventually put his focus on the small scale, stating that society is, people together making culture. He deemed two of his cardinal social principles to be opposition to central political authority and concern for people as individuals. His rejection of standard American party politics was reflected in a lecture he gave during which he said, the Democrats or liberals think that everybody is stupid and therefore they need somebody, to tell them how to behave themselves. The Republicans think everybody is lazy. The Vietnam War split the uneasy alliance between growing numbers of American libertarians and conservatives who believed in limiting liberty to uphold moral virtues. Libertarians opposed to the war joined the draft resistance and peace movements, as well as organizations such as Students for a Democratic Society In 1969 and 1970, Hess joined with others, including Murray Rothbard, Robert Lefevre, Dana Rohrbacher, Samuel Edward Konkin III and former SDS leader Carl Oglesby to speak at two left -right conferences which brought together activists from both the old right and the new left in what was emerging as a nascent libertarian movement. As part of his effort to unite right and left libertarianism, Hess would join the SDS as well as the Industrial Workers of the World IWW, of which he explained, we used to have a labor movement in this country, until IWW leaders were killed or imprisoned. You could tell labor unions had become captive when business and government began to praise them. They're destroying the militant black leaders the same way now. If the slaughter continues, before long liberals will be asking, what happened to the blacks? Why aren't they militant anymore? Quote dot. Rothbard ultimately broke with the left, allying himself instead with the burgeoning Pala conservative movement. He criticized the tendency of these left libertarians to appeal to free spirits, to people who don't want to push other people around, and who don't want to be pushed around themselves, in contrast to the bulk of Americans who might well be tight-assed conformists, who want to stamp out drugs in their vicinity, kick out people with strange dress habits, etc. Quote dot. This left libertarian tradition has been carried to the present day by Samuel Edward Conk and III's agorists, contemporary mutualists such as Kevin Carson and Roderick T. Long and other left-wing market anarchists. In 1971, a small group of Americans led by David Nolan formed the Libertarian Party, which has run a presidential candidate every election year since 1972. Other libertarian organizations, such as the Center for Libertarian Studies and the Cato Institute, were also formed in the 1970s. Philosopher John Hospers, a one-time member of Rand's inner circle, proposed a non-initiation of force principle to unite both groups, but this statement later became a required pledge for candidates of the Libertarian Party and Hospers became its first presidential candidate in 1972. In the 1980s, Hess joined the Libertarian Party and served as editor of its newspaper from 1986 to 1990. 
Modern libertarianism gained significant recognition in academia with the publication of Harvard University professor Robert Nozick's Anarchy, State, and Utopia in 1974, for which he received a National Book Award in 1975. In response to John Rawls's A Theory of Justice, Nozick's book supported a minimal state also called a Nightwatchman state by Nozick on the grounds that the ultraminimal state arises without violating individual rights and the transition from an ultraminimal state to a minimal state is morally obligated to occur. Specifically, Nozick writes we argue that the first transition from a system of private protective agencies to an ultraminimal state, will occur by an invisible hand process in a morally permissible way that violates no one's rights. Secondly, we argue that the transition from an ultraminimal state to a minimal state morally must occur. It would be morally impermissible for persons to maintain the monopoly in the ultraminimal state without providing protective services for all, even if this requires specific redistribution. The operators of the ultraminimal state are morally obligated to produce the minimal state. In the early 1970s, Rothbard wrote that. Oh, nay gratifying aspect of our rise to some prominence is that, for the first time in my memory, we, our side, had captured a crucial word from the enemy. Libertarians had long been simply a polite word for left-wing anarchists, that is for anti-private property anarchists, either of the communist or syndicalist variety. But now we had taken it over. Indeed, the project of spreading libertarian ideals in the United States has been so successful that some Americans who don't identify as libertarian seem to hold libertarian views. Since the resurgence of neoliberalism in the 1970s, this modern American libertarianism has spread beyond North America via think tanks and political parties. Topic: <laughs> Contemporary libertarianism. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Contemporary libertarian socialism. A surge of popular interest in libertarian socialism occurred in Western nations during the 1960s and 1970s. Anarchism was influential in the counterculture of the 1960s and anarchists actively participated in the late 60s students' and workers' revolts. In 1968, the International of Anarchist Federations was founded in Carrara, Italy during an international anarchist conference held there in 1968 by the three existing European federations of France, the Italian and the Iberian Anarchist Federation as well as the Bulgarian Federation in French exile. The uprisings of May 1968 also led to a small resurgence of interest in left communist ideas. Various small left communist groups emerged around the world, predominantly in the leading capitalist countries. A series of conferences of the communist left began in 1976, with the aim of promoting international and cross-tendency discussion, but these petered out in the 1980s without having increased the profile of the movement or its unity of ideas. Left communist groups existing today include the International Communist Party, International Communist Current and the Internationalist Communist Tendency. The housing and employment crisis in most of Western Europe led to the formation of communes and squatter movements like that of Barcelona, Spain. In Denmark, squatters occupied a disused military base and declared the Freetown Christiania, an autonomous haven in central Copenhagen. Around the turn of the 21st century, libertarian socialism grew in popularity and influence as part of the anti-war, anti-capitalist and anti-globalization movements. Anarchists became known for their involvement in protests against the meetings of the World Trade Organization WTO, Group of Eight and the World Economic Forum. Some anarchist factions at these protests engaged in rioting, property destruction and violent confrontations with police. These actions were precipitated by ad hoc, leaderless, anonymous cadres known as black blocs and other organizational tactics pioneered in this time include security culture, affinity groups and the use of decentralized technologies such as the Internet. A significant event of this period was the confrontations at WTO conference in Seattle in 1999. For English anarchist scholar Simon Critchley. Contemporary anarchism can be seen as a powerful critique of the pseudo-libertarianism of contemporary neoliberalism. 
One might say that contemporary anarchism is about responsibility, whether sexual, ecological or socio-economic, it flows from an experience of conscience about the manifold ways in which the West ravages the rest, it is an ethical outrage at the yawning inequality, impoverishment and disenfranchisement that is so palpable locally and globally." This might also have been motivated by the collapse of really existing socialism and the capitulation to neoliberalism of Western social democracy. Libertarian socialists in the early 21st century have been involved in the alter globalization movement, squatter movement, social centers, infoshops, anti poverty groups such as Ontario Coalition Against Poverty and Food Not Bombs, tenants' unions, housing cooperatives, intentional communities generally, and egalitarian communities, anti sexist organizing, grassroots media initiatives, digital media and computer activism, experiments in participatory economics, anti racist and anti fascist groups like anti-racist action and anti-fascist action, activist groups protecting the rights of immigrants and promoting the free movement of people, such as the No Border Network, worker cooperatives, counter-cultural and artist groups, and the peace movement. American libertarianism In the United States, polls circa 2006 find that the views and voting habits of between 10 and 20 percent and increasing of voting age Americans may be classified as fiscally conservative and socially liberal, or libertarian. This is based on pollsters and researchers defining libertarian views as fiscally conservative and socially liberal based on the common United States meanings of the terms and against government intervention in economic affairs and for expansion of personal freedoms. Through 20 polls on this topic spanning 13 years, Gallup found that voters who are libertarian on the political spectrum ranged from 17 to 23 percent of the United States electorate. However, a 2014 Pew poll found that 23 percent of Americans who identify as libertarians have no idea what the word means. 2009 saw the rise of the Tea Party movement, an American political movement known for advocating a reduction in the United States national debt and federal budget deficit by reducing government spending and taxes, which had a significant libertarian component despite having contrasts with libertarian values and views in some areas, such as nationalism, free trade, social issues and immigration. A 2011 Reason Root poll found that among those who self-identified as Tea Party supporters, 41% leaned libertarian and 59% socially conservative. The movement, named after the Boston Tea Party, also contains conservative and populist elements and has sponsored multiple protests and supported various political candidates since 2009. Tea Party activities have declined since 2010 with the number of chapters across the country slipping from about 1,000 to 600. Mostly, Tea Party organizations are said to have shifted away from national demonstrations to local issues. Following the selection of Paul Ryan as Mitt Romney's 2012 vice presidential running mate, The New York Times declared that Tea Party lawmakers are no longer a fringe of the conservative coalition, but now, indisputably at the core of the modern Republican Party. In 2012, anti-war presidential candidates Libertarian Republican Ron Paul and Libertarian Party candidate Gary Johnson raised millions of dollars and garnered millions of votes despite opposition to their obtaining ballot access by Democrats and Republicans. The 2012 Libertarian National Convention, which saw Gary Johnson and James P. Gray nominated as the 2012 presidential ticket for the Libertarian Party, resulted in the most successful result for a third-party presidential candidacy since 2000 and the best in the Libertarian Party's history by vote number. Johnson received 1% of the popular vote, amounting to more than 1.2 million votes. Johnson has expressed a desire to win at least 5% of the vote so that the Libertarian Party candidates could get equal ballot access and federal funding, thus subsequently ending the two-party system. Topic. Contemporary libertarian organizations Since the 1950s, many American libertarian organizations have adopted a free market stance, as well as supporting civil liberties and non-interventionist foreign policies. These include the Ludwig von Mises Institute, Francisco Marroquin University, the Foundation for Economic Education, Center for Libertarian Studies, the Cato Institute and Liberty International. 
The Activist Free State Project, formed in 2001, works to bring 20,000 libertarians to New Hampshire to influence state policy. Active student organizations include Students for Liberty and Young Americans for Liberty. A number of countries have libertarian parties that run candidates for political office. In the United States, the Libertarian Party was formed in 1972 and is the third largest American political party, with over 370,000 registered voters in the 35 states that allow registration as a libertarian and has hundreds of party candidates elected or appointed to public office. Current international anarchist federations, which sometimes identify themselves as libertarian, include the International of Anarchist Federations, the International Workers Association, and International Libertarian Solidarity. The largest organized anarchist movement today is in Spain, in the form of the Confederación General del Trabajo CGT and the CNT. CGT membership was estimated to be around 100,000 for 2003. Other active syndicalist movements include the Central Organization of the Workers of Sweden and the Swedish Anarcho-Syndicalist Youth Federation in Sweden, the Union Syndicale Italiana in Italy, Workers' Solidarity Alliance in the United States, and Solidarity Federation in the United Kingdom. The revolutionary industrial unionist industrial workers of the world claiming 2,000 paying members as well as the International Workers' Association, an anarcho-syndicalist successor to the First International, also remain active. In the United States, there exists the Common Struggle, Libertarian Communist Federation. Criticism Criticism of libertarianism includes ethical, economic, environmental, pragmatic, and philosophical concerns. It has also been argued that laissez-faire capitalism does not necessarily produce the best or most efficient outcome, nor does its philosophy of individualism and policies of deregulation prevent the abuse of natural resources. <laughs> Authenticity of libertarian goals Critics such as Cory Robin describe right libertarianism as fundamentally a reactionary conservative ideology, united with more traditional conservative thought and goals by a desire to enforce hierarchical power and social relations. Conservatism, then, is not a commitment to limited government and liberty or a wariness of change, a belief in evolutionary reform, or a politics of virtue. These may be the byproducts of conservatism, one or more of its historically specific and ever changing modes of expression but they are not its animating purpose. Neither is conservatism a makeshift fusion of capitalists, Christians, and warriors, for that fusion is impelled by a more elemental force. The opposition to the liberation of men and women from the fetters of their superiors, particularly in the private sphere. Such a view might seem miles away from the libertarian defense of the free market, with its celebration of the atomistic and autonomous individual. But it is not. When the libertarian looks out upon society, he does not see isolated individuals, he sees private, often hierarchical, groups, where a father governs his family and an owner his employees. <laughs> <laughs> Government decentralization John Donahue argues that if political power were radically shifted to local authorities, parochial local interests would predominate at the expense of the whole and that this would exacerbate current problems with collective action. <laughs> Lack of real-world examples of libertarianism Michael Lind has observed that of the 195 countries in the world today, none have fully actualized a libertarian society. If libertarianism was a good idea, wouldn't at least one country have tried it? Wouldn't there be at least one country, out of nearly 200, with minimal government, free trade, open borders, decriminalized drugs, no welfare state and no public education system? Lind has also criticized libertarianism, particularly the right-wing and free-market variant of the ideology, as being incompatible with democracy and apologetic towards autocracy. In response, libertarian Warren Redlick argues that the United States was extremely libertarian from the founding until 1860, and still very libertarian until roughly 1930. Topic. See also. Topic Notes Topic References
Topic: Bibliography. Topic: External links. Foundation for Economic Education, Foundation for Economic Education, an American libertarian organization founded in 1946. Libertarianism.org Libertarianism Sponsored by the Cato Institute, it discusses the history, theory and practice of libertarianism. Libertarianism. Internet Encyclopedia of Philosophy.